I'm going to give a little demo right now of using BrickCC for some native code application writing. Let's go ahead and connect. This is connecting by USB. I'm going to show you that uh, the same facility that existed for the NXT where you have a, aliases and full brick resource names works with the EV3, at least currently with the USB connections. Here's a EV3 version of a full USB brick resource string. You can see that it has the the bricks ID in the string, <coughs> as well as its USB product and version number, or vendor number. Sorry, vendor and product ID. Let's go to see where the file is stored. Since it's not just specific to NXT, I've actually renamed the file that BrickCC uses. So, if you're using a test release and you notice that some of your aliases aren't showing up, you can go to your percent app data percent folder. Joe Carr Consulting, BrickCC 3.3, and rename your nxt.dat file as brick, bricks, b r i c k s dot dat. And so you can see here that I have the very first line is an nxt USB brick resource string with the vendor and product ID for the nxt, and then this line alias one is for the EV3. And that's one I've got selected. So either standard or Linux will work. Let's click OK. And we're connected to the EB3. We can run the diagnostic tool, see that it's returning information from the brick. You can use double click on the name here, as I mentioned, to change the brick name. We'll set it to JCH here. <coughs> A refresh will re, re pull the brick for information. Let's go to screen capture tool. Right click, click pull now or control N. You can see that it I did change the name of my brick from EV3 to JCH. Let me go ahead and change it back to EV3 for now. <coughs> Let's go ahead and look at the preferences dialog under the compiler for EV3. There's a tab called Brick OS, has a make file template, has some settings for the code source relight compiler as well as the Pascal compiler has a folder for where it's going to store files and remotely the IP address. Some of these things aren't currently being used and will be removed most likely. It's still in flux here. But you can see the template here. There are some tokens that you know percent program percent etc. Those are tokens. You can see on the EVC tab there's nothing there because I haven't implemented anything yet for a, a virtual machine targeting compiler. The RCX tab contains all the tabs that used to be at the higher level for the compilers that work with the RCX. <clears throat> this FPC flag is for the free Pascal compiler. I'm just checking here to see if everything looks right. You can look at this. You can also tell it to uh, save the generated make file if you want to look at the make files that, that get generated by the, the IDE. But let's go ahead and type a very simple hello world program. Include standard IO. <coughs> and we will just print f hello world. Nothing fancy at all. Okay. Let's go ahead and just compile this. And we have to save it first. I forgot about that. So let's go ahead and save it. HW.C. <coughs> now we can go ahead and compile that. <coughs> and see if there's any warnings or errors. Let's resize this window a little bit. So you see this is the code listing. I don't have a code listing working yet. That may or may not come soon. But... If I make it an error in the program, you can see that it does show the line number and the error message. <coughs> it doesn't work if the currently it doesn't work if the error is in an included file. So um, it also is not showing any linker errors, as you can see here. So there is an error, but it's a linker error. So I don't have it showing linker errors yet. <coughs> but let's go ahead and just show how you would fix this problem. Let's go ahead and include the foobar.h header file. 
this will be a little demo of how you create a program with multiple C source files. Okay, so we need a foobar.h header file. Let's go ahead and create that. It just has the foobar void program declaration. So that's saved. <clears throat> but we still don't have the actual source code for it. Let's go ahead and create that. Let's put a little comment here, foobar.c, and that is, a, you know, contains a function, returns nothing, takes no parameters, and all it's going to do is do another printf. Let's see, printf, what should I do? It worked. Nah. Let's say Hello World by John Hansen. There we go. So Fubar just outputs by John Hansen. <coughs> Save that to a file. And let's go back and see if we can compile now. And I think we still get errors here. Oh, okay, well that didn't work. So what's going on? Still a linker. Same exact linker error we were getting before. So I created the file, but I haven't told the compiler the compiler generating make file generator that this other file is part of hello world so I need to do that let me show you how to do that this view project manager let's get this on screen the main file is hw.c but we can add files to the project with right click add or control insert we'll add foobar.c now it's part of the project so when I generate the make file it'll actually compile and link in that code here's a warning it compiled successfully but there is a warning here so let's go ahead and fix that warning I'm gonna go ahead and because printf is in foobar.c I'm gonna go ahead and include it here in the header file like so <coughs> and move it or take it out of this hello world because it's going to be included through foobar.h still the same warning so what I need to do yeah I need to include foobar.h in this source code file as well so include foobar.h here and that should take care of that but I want to also make sure that foobar.h doesn't get included multiple times so let's go ahead and add some include guards to this header file if not defined underscore underscore foobar underscore h and we will pound define it and then we'll end the this particular file with a end if <coughs> that should make it so that if we include the header multiple times it doesn't cause any problems at all it doesn't redefine anything or anything like that so that should work fine we'll control we'll compile it and no errors so this is the empty code listing Let's go and verify that it is not currently on the the AV3. Bring up our Explorer tool, and let's have a look and see if it's listed as a file HW. It does not seem to be here anywhere. Okay, that looks good. No sign of HW on the EV3. <coughs> so go ahead and download this program to the EV3. I click there that compiled and downloaded and let's go ahead and go back switch back with the view tool windows which is shift F9 and we will see it'll pop forward when I click here on tool windows it will pop all tool windows ahead in front of the main window okay so I'm again Alright, so now I just click View, Tool Windows, Shift F9, and it will pop forward. Let's refresh the Brick Explorer, scroll down, and here we see, oh yeah, there it is, 5910, 5910, about 6K, HW, Hello World. I want to bring up a putty window, connect via Telnet on my, my EV3's IP address. Again, it's connected very very nicely via a wired ethernet can able you don't have to f fiddle around with connecting to a wireless 
hosts with the password and all that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and see. It's in media slash media slash card ls dash l h w. There we have it, and I'll just run it, and it says "Hello World" by John Hansen. And that's all we need to do. So that was a very simple demo of a very simple program. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and close <clears throat> that. All right, and we can view that with the viewer tool in the Explorer and see it's an ELF executable. Okay. Alright, now let's go back to the main IDE window. And I'm going to open another file. Let's change folder to where I have my C API library on my D drive. API, API slash C, I think is where I need to go. Okay. And let's scroll down. There's a snapshot.c. And we're going to go ahead and open snapshot.c. Okay. So here we have it. Move this over a little bit. Okay. So you can see here it's pretty involved. Not horribly complicated, but it's not a hello world program. It's got a lot of your basic C stuff, including several headers. Lots of string manipulation, switch statements, enum types for the different supported Im image formats. And so I'm just going to have a quick look here to see if I can figure out why. What I'm doing wrong when it comes to uh, the XBM format. In the previous video I showed you that there's a little bit of a bug there in terms of the value that I'm writing out. Let me see. That's down here. A little further down. Yeah. Right. There. Okay, so yeah, I'm writing out base, which includes the extension. So I need to extract a, a substring of that that does not include the extension, which I think I can easily fix that, but I'll do that later. But there you have it. That's the entire source code, 305 lines of code to create this little snapshot utility. I'm not including any of the API headers. I kind of ripped out bits and pieces from my EV3 LCD API header and C source, source file. But it has a lot of other stuff that I didn't need. I wanted this utility to be really small. So let's go ahead and test it. We'll rename the old one with the PBRIC Explorer and you'll see it doesn't work the screen capture does not work anymore because it's gone I will click download and very quickly compiled and downloaded let's go back to my explore tool window refresh you can see now snapshot is back and so <clears throat> I should now be able to use the screen capture tool successfully so I'll go ahead and pull now and there we go so very quickly compile download one click in Brick CC, a native ARM executable. And that's all I got for today. Thank you.